Hey there everybody, this is NDM here, welcome you to another episode of Let's Play Metroid Prime for the Nintendo GameCube. Right, so in the last episode we got to the new area which is Vendrana Drifts. It's uh, kind of weird, we were in a hot area and now we're in a cold area. It's like we came straight out of summer and into winter. Straight out of summer and into winter. Yep, that's basically it. So um, I'm going to press the pause menu here and show you guys the menu screen because I don't think I've actually shown you this. Um, there's also a GameCube symbol on here too, <laughs> which I think is kind of cool. But this is like the options screen. You can change um, the brightness and the. I think you can change the volume and all that crap. You know, every game has a options screen like that. So I mean, there's obviously some new enemies here that we can scan. So let's go ahead and scan some of these. We've got Crystallite, Territorial Cold Weather Scavenger. The shell of a crystallite reflects beam weapons and can only crack be cracked by a concussive blast. They hang upside down in an ice cave during their larval stage. Moisture runs off its body, forms the hard ice shell which the crystallite retains for the rest of its life. So you can kill this by shooting a missile at it. <laughs> um, there's no other way of killing those, I don't think you can't kill them with morph ball bombs or anything like that, so just use your missiles. <clears throat> and there's a save station here, so I'm going to do that. I should have done that towards the end of the last video, but... <clears throat> no, well. And I'm saving now, so sue me. Sue me. Sue my ass. For a thousand dollars. For ten thousand dollars, you can win this luxurious hotspot in the middle of... Fendrana Drifts, come on down and have a blast, have a party, and bring all your friends. It might be cold, but it's, at least the atmosphere is cool. <laughs> I don't know, just talking random shit. Alright, so um, the first thing you want to do in here, because as you saw there's a locked door there, so you're probably wondering what the hell you're supposed to do with that. Well, there's this grating here, if you scan this it'll tell you. Grating has become brittle from temperature fluctuations, large traces of radiant detected. So I think you destroy this with a missile too. Yeah, you do. Alright, okay, so let's, I think you might even be able to scan that from here. Yeah, you don't need to roll in there or anything. Well, actually, maybe you do. Uh, was I too far away from it? Yeah, I think so. Actually, no, I think I did scan it. But it didn't show a cutscene, which I think it's supposed to do. I don't know why I didn't like transition to the door opening for us because usually it does that oh well okay so wait did I scan these things there's like these little sonic wave things hovering around here so if you scan these this is a, I don't know what these are called they might be ice shriek bats actually oh no they're the flicker bat never mind yeah, you can't really... they're very hard to kill because they're really fast and they move fast. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to kill them, they're harmless. Like, they won't attack you. <clears throat> well, this is another type of pulse bomboo here. I think this is actually called the wave bomboo, or scatter bomboo, never mind. Okay, so you just roll underneath these. As we can't kill them yet because we don't have the right weapon to do so. And my scan visor's gone all scatter fucked, scatter brained. Alright, so these are actually very famous and no noteworthy enemies here. Um, so these are the sh baby Shigos. And uh, they're the ultimate predator on Fendrana Drifts. Basically, eat and kill anything. The only way you can kill these is by shooting the carapace on the back of their body, exposing their skin, and then, you know, shooting the exposed part of its body, or exposed part of its butt in this case, and kill it. Well, then you start fighting the daddy she goths, and they're freaking nasty things, I tell you. Or the mama she goths. Well, there must be a mummy and a daddy, but they. What I'm saying is that they're both adults. They're like they're, they're both adults. I don't know what I'm saying. Basically, you fight a giant shegoth, like an adult form of a shegoth. I mean, for all that, well, it has to have a mummy and a daddy because how the hell are the how the hell are the baby shegoths gonna come by? I mean.
obviously you can't identify the adult she-goth by its gender because there's no thing to really identify the gender, you know. <clears throat> Alright, is there uh, anything else I can scan around here before I leave or is there anything else I can pick up before I leave? No, I don't think so. I think it's just, just a dead end room for now, so we'll just leave. And these are a different type of burrow over here. Uh, this is the ice burrow. No different than the regular burrow, just an ice burrow that lives in Fendrana Drifts. Same, same strategy really, you just shoot it as it comes out. And it doesn't deal more damage to you than the regular burrows do. So it's just the same crap, really. <clears throat> Alright, we got bombus here, so just avoid these. Yeah, actually, hang on a second. Do I need... Uh, I'll just grab some health here, real quick. While avoiding the chaos at the same time. And there's more Shigos in here. And also there's Chozo Lore in here as well, I believe, that we can scan in this little area here. Actually, I think there might be two scans that we can get from Chozo War in this little this little room here. I'm being shot out by Shigos uh, from the outside. Stranger from the outside! Whoa! <coughs> Great poison. Yeah, let's talk about um, well, I think actually they're not talking about the uh, poison from Flagra there. They're actually talking about the Phazon as the, being the great poison in in this case. So yeah, I'm sorry. Did I wake you up by wandering around? I'm sorry, dude. My footsteps must be really loud to have disturbed your slumber. However, that will no longer be a problem because I'm going to put you to rest by killing your ass. And putting you out of your misery. If you would just be so kind as to let me turn around. <laughs> I always thought it was funny the way how they die. They just like let out this one last gigantic scream in agony. They're like, Grrr! and that's the kind of sound you'd make is if you were like, you know, trying to vomit or hurl. In this case. Alright, so this is actually going to be an area where we're going to be picking up a very useful item too for the Morph Ball here, so we'll be picking up that very shortly. Um, and there's also some Chosen Lore here which I'm going to scan. Uh, I think they also, this one also talks about the Great Poison. A lot of them do, they, they refer to the, um, to like, the the asteroid kind of thing, or the you know, well, the thing that basically caused the impact crater to appear, um, as being like the great, I don't know, or the bringer of destruction. Basically, yeah, they call it the bringer of destruction, and they 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 say that the great poison is the phase on because apparently this impact crater is the source of the phase on, and. That's basically what the Chozo lore is trying to tell us. I mean, I've already explained that, but I think I just explained some of it in detail that I haven't yet explained. Because I think I explained it as the... Well, I know I explained it as the Great Poison being the poison that Flagra was causing, but... I mean, that's the case in Chozo Ruins, I think, but in general, they're like referring to the Great Poison more... more referring it to as the Phazon. So we got the boost ball, a very useful and handy item indeed, because now we can just like, um, well we can reach higher areas using the boost ball by getting momentum from the half pipes, so we can boost our way up to higher ledges and stuff. So why don't we go ahead and demonstrate that. There are some half pipes in this game that can be kind of annoying using this. You have to press the B button at the right time to get your height to reach its maximum height. Oh no, it's kind of weird, you have to play the game to really understand that. 
I mean, if, for, for those of you that have played the game and are watching this for entertainment purposes, then obviously you guys will know what I'm talking about. But if you, you if you guys are using this for walkthrough purposes and you're playing this game for the first time, then just wait until you get to some of the half pipes later on in the game because some of them, man, I don't know, I just can't seem to get the B button to reach its maximum height while boosting. It's kind of weird. I'll explain more of that when I get to a half pipe that I can demonstrate that more further into detail. Uh, let's get rid of this Shegoth here and I think I might end off after I've killed this guy. So there's nothing more that we can do in Chozo, no, Chozo, <laughs> Fendrana Drifts for now. That's all we came here for really, so... Um, with the boost ball in hand, we need to go back to Talon Overworld, so I don't know if I'll meet, I, I might actually meet you guys there at the start of the next video and we can just record from there, because uh, I think, well you guys, uh, well you guys will know where I'm at when I get back to Talon Overworld, I'll even point to you guys where I'm at when I get there, but, um, oh there's a cutscene here, I'll keep this in, this is actually quite an epic cutscene, and you can tell by the shadow you already know what that is, yep. That's Ridley trying to escape from us again. Well, he ain't gonna escape once I finally corner his ass. Anyway, guys, um, I'm gonna end off the video here, and we'll continue on the next video. So, in the next episode, let's play Metro Prime. I will meet you guys back at uh, Talon Overworld. So, I will see you all then.